Okay, um, this is this is for you, Linda, um, and for anybody else that would like to see this wonderful, wonderful burial of um, of Sandy, my sister's uh, remains. And I was going to start at first by um, by reading her her obituary. So, um, did you all see this? Okay, I'm going to project, all right, this is Sandra Brownell, uh, Sandra Brownell, 70, she didn't look 70, of Atlanta, Georgia, passed away and went to heaven, if anybody went to heaven, it was Sandra, because she was such a good person. Uh, on December 14th, 2015, she was a native of Eau Claire. Um, she was born September 28, 1945, to Rose and Arnie, who are right here, and her brother right here, Butch Arnold Brownell Jr. is buried right there. On September 28, 1945, to Rose and Arnie Brownell. She's survived by her sisters, myself, Barbara Brownell of North Hollywood, California, and Linda Ingebrand of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Sandra made contributions to many charities and was always devoted to her church. She dedicated much of her life to children, mentoring them, often taking them to Sunday school and then out to lunch afterwards. She also tutored troubled boys at the Eagle Ranch uh, in Georgia and neighbor uh, children. She was known as the lady with the popsicle, the popsicle lady, which she happily shared with all. Um, Sandy attended Eau Claire Memorial High School for a year, and we're not sure which, which year. And she later took classes at Princeton University. She was an avid reader and published poet, and she loved animals. And she kept the squirrels and the chipmunks in her apartment complex well fed and cared for. Uh, professionally, she devoted 30 years to various administrative positions at Coca Cola Corporation. Um, where she made many longtime friends. And Sweet Sandy will be remembered fondly for all those lives she touched, and there were many, for her kindness, her generosity, and her compassion. Okay, that's, that's the obituary. And then um, I was going to have Mark. Mark was going to, uh, Mark is her cousin, and Mark Sumby is going to, to read for us. As Barbara mentioned, um, I was Sandy's cousin, and back up a little. Yeah. And, uh, oh. <laughs> and and Barbara chose um, a reading from First Thessalonians, which is a letter from Paul, and I think it's very appropriate for this morning. It talks about how whether we're dead or alive, we will all be reunited in Christ. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do not have hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died the Lord himself with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now we'll have um, Psalm 23 from Sandy's aunt. I just wanted to say that we are all so very fond of Marilyn. She was like a second mom to us. So uh, this is very, very meaningful. Oh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm honored to be right over you. here so we can get you on camera oh, for Linda. Yeah, that's your mark.
23rd Psalm, maybe a little different version than I'm used to. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow grass and leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. He helps me do what honor his what honors him the most. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, guarding, guiding all the way. You provide delicious food for me and in the presence of my enemies. You have welcomed me as your guest. Blessings overflow. Your goodness and unfailing kindness shall be with me all of my life. And afterwards, I will live with you forever. That's beautiful. That was beautiful. Um, I um, I wanted to ask anybody that would like to say something um, to say something about Sandy. Um, I would love for you to come forward. You don't have to, but if anybody, how about her her high school mate there? Mm -hmm. All right. If, if you could come and stand right there, so we can get you for Linda. Yeah, I went to school with Sam. I think it was his sophomore year in high school. Oh, yeah. And um, I remember the first few days, uh, she didn't, I had to help her because she didn't know where to go or what to do or didn't know anybody. But she did good. After a while, I think she made several friends. And uh, she was a good gal. Like her a lot. And her sister, Barbara, and uh, Linda up at the farm. Always had a good time. But she was a sweet lady, and I and I seen her when. Uh, did you get to kiss her? Did you just spin the I, bottle? I, I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Which is good. But uh, but I saw all you girl, all the girls I seen them at, at Arnie's funeral at the, uh, in 2008. The last time I seen her. Mm -hmm. I see, see her and Linda went to and Barbara. All right. Is there anybody else that would like to is say really? anything? You're more than welcome. I'll say a couple. Oh, okay. And, and you have to really stand behind here because you're so tall. Uh, Otherwise, we're, we're going to cut off your head. And project, Ken, because I know you have a problem with that. Yes, I always did have a quiet voice. But anyway, I, I remember her uh, coming up to Earl Cora's farm. It should be Cora and Vesper's farm. But uh, anyway, uh, she was always quiet. Uh, seemed uh, a very nice person and of course our famous spin the bottle game and Barbara and her sisters took advantage of us farm boys <laughs> dramatically which, uh, which was a highlight of our young life <laughs> so but uh, we all participated on our front porch and, uh, and I remember her at the, one of the steam engine shows at uh, Earl had on his farm, and uh, I think I don't know. I don't remember you there, Barbara. Were you there when the steam engines were all there? I didn't. I just saw the but, film of it. But Sandra and Linda were there, and they'd be on the steam engines and having fun. And, but, and, and Butch, Butch happened to be. I got to tell this little quick story. Sure. Butch was driving the tractor one day when I was up on the bundle load, and he oh, jerked the clutch a little, and I went off the back of the trailer. And that put me in the hospital for a little bit, but I, I never blame Butch. He, he didn't do it on purpose. But Sandra and the girls, they, they didn't do much out on the hay wagon. Maybe Linda some, but Barbara uh, and the rest were kind of... Uh, we were girly girls. We were, we were, we were waiting kids. to play spin the bottle. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, I don't know where you guys got that game from, but... Oh, I thought you taught it to uh, us. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So anyway, that's that's what I remember of her, and uh, she seemed like a very great person, just like the rest of the family. Oh, so, thank you. Okay, does anybody else want to say anything? Okay, can you can you get up there? Okay, but we won't be able to get it. Okay. Oh. I remember Sandy so often on our trips to Florida, coming or going. We would give her a phone call, and she graciously said, come over, come over. So we got to visit her a few times in Atlanta and that. And back to the few years back now, she would call, she would write letters, and they were so precious, <coughs> just like Sandy was. Yeah, she's so sweet. She always has these letters, yeah. She, um, uh, 
Sandy was very close to Ida. You know. Ida Bell. Ida Bell. Yes. She did not want to be called Ida Bell, but uh, Sandra was very close. They got together, and um, yeah, that was very precious to her. Anybody else want to say anything? All right, then I'm going to I'm going to read this. I read this when we were in Atlanta, but it's even more appropriate now. It's uh, "Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep" by Mary Elizabeth Fry, and also Barbara, because I added a couple of little things. Karen will appreciate that about butterflies and things that were precious to her. Do not stand at my grave and weep, and I will try not to weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. Barbara's part. I am chipmunks and squirrels and butterflies. I am roses, gardens, and baby's cries. I am the sunlight on ripened grain, which is so really wonderful here in Wisconsin. I am the sunlight on ripened grave. I am the gentle summer rain. When you awaken in the morning hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds and circled light. I am the twinkling stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. And she does, she does, she lives on. Okay, I was just gonna ask uh, Mark to do a, a, a little closing. traditional closing a memorial service in the Christian tradition. And if you could all hold hands. Join me in prayer. Oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Sandra to us, so, so now we give Sandra back to you. Receive Sandra into the arms of your mercy. Raise Sandra up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. Okay, so uh, if anybody would like to stay here for a few minutes, I would like to stay here for a few minutes. Um, um, we have a couple of tables reserved at the, the Green Mill. The brown owls can't come because <laughs> I'm going to see them tonight. But you're all invited to the Green Mill for a little brunch, lunch, breakfast. And um, thank you all so much for coming. I really, really, really appreciate it. I know Sandra appreciates it. And I know Linda appreciates it. I know Mom and Dad and Butch and Nettie, they all appreciate it. And, and if uh, any of you would come sometime and, and visit, I would appreciate that too. All right. Yes. I missed my cue. Oh, you missed your cue. Okay, Meryl. When I 